Father, we are grateful this morning. We give you all the glory and honor. We testify in our song that you are our God. And more than that, you reign yesterday, today, tomorrow, and even forever. We lift up our voice to worship your holy name this morning. And we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness. Thank you because you are the God that is always there. Man may not always be there, but you are always there. Time may not always be there, but you are always there. We thank you, Lord, because you are the reason for our living and you are the focus of our boasting. Lord, we thank you. Be thou exalted this morning and always in Jesus' name. This morning, we ask that you will open our eyes again. Let the heavens be open. Let there be a downpour of the blessings of God. The blessings of encouragement, the blessings of victory, the blessings of redemption, the blessings of restoration, the blessings of healing, the blessings of reconciliation. Every blessing that is provided for in the redemption through the blood of Jesus, we open our hearts today to receive all of them. And I pray that the hand of God will rest upon everyone. You will open our eyes as we open the scripture. You will open our heart as we receive explanation that nobody will go back home the same way they came here today. As by the end of today's service, we will be more comforted, more strengthened, more encouraged, stronger than ever before in the name of Jesus. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Do and say the things that only you can do and say. Glorify Jesus and establish the counsel of the Father. At the end of today, may we know you more. May we trust you more. May we obey you more. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Now, you are going to do the shouting again. This is the last Sunday in this ministerial year. One full year is gone. Are you hearing me now? For me, I'm thanking God that I'm still standing. Standing in front of you, ministering to you in power and strength. Are you hearing me now? I cannot count how many times I have stood on this pulpit this year. It's not by power. It's not by strength, but by my spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I cannot quantify the psychic energy that has gone into ministration this year. And yet, this time next year, I will still be here. Standing strong for many, 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 many more years to come. How many of you want to hear my voice? Many, many, many more years to come. I believe you are praying for me. And I will also see you for many, 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 many more years to come. So if that is your faith, this morning we are going to shout hallelujah like unto people that will still be here for many, 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 many more years. In good health, in progress, in prosperity. In, in transformation. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. For those of you that will see the goodness of your children, that you will see it, that nobody will replace you. You will sit down. They will greet you. Congratulations. You will be there in the day of your joy. They will hide you somewhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? For those of you that your children will become doctors, PhD holders, lawyers, engineers, eh? that you will eat the fruit of your labor. Those of you who believe that, can you shout hallelujah? <laughs> For those of you that sickness cannot stop, that disease won't stop, that death won't stop. For those of you that we escape by mercy, okay, that the economic situation of the country cannot stop. That you will begin to move from glory to glory. Help will come. Grace will be multiplied. Strength will increase. Health will become better. Shout hallelujah! That's our portion. In the name of Jesus. This time next year we will be ten times better. Ten times stronger. Ten times wealthier. Ten times more stable in God. 
In the name of Jesus. No death. No sickness. No disease. No poverty. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Nothing stolen. Nothing spoiled. Nothing dead. All recovered. In the name of Jesus. You receive that? That's our portion. Please be seated. Amen. I'm going to share the last message in our teaching in Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25 to 34. I'm looking at the 14th message today. Amen. And uh, that is victory over worry habit part 2. Victory over the worry habit part 2. And I will be reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Victory over the worry habit, part 2. Worry has become a habit, a negative habit, and is becoming more pronounced, especially in these last days. When things are not moving well in the world, the economy is down, there are many more reasons to worry in the world. But don't develop that negative habit. But Jesus has given us the solution. How to overcome that negative habit of worry and anxiety. In Matthew chapter 6, I read verse 34. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. That was what we shared last week. Don't worry about tomorrow. It is wrong to worry about tomorrow. If you are worrying about tomorrow today, today will be messed up for you. When you use today to worry about tomorrow, you will lose the joy of today. You will lose the fulfillment of today. One key way to overcome worry is to live tomorrow with God and with his good foresight. You remember that. Live tomorrow with God. Tell somebody, live tomorrow with God. The God that you are serving is the God of yesterday, is the God of today, and is also the God of tomorrow. He will go ahead of you. Stop worrying about tomorrow today. It is the plan of the devil to mess up today for you. To deprive you of joy. To deprive you of fulfillment. And to frustrate you. Okay? So stop worrying about tomorrow today. That is what we did last week. What we are doing today is the last statement. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Are we together? Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. I told you there are three truths from Matthew chapter 6 verse 34. The first one is live tomorrow with God. The second one Labor today with God's guidance and great faith. Labor today with God's guidance and great faith. And the part of our text that we are focusing today is sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So today is your focus. If you are going to overcome worry, and anxiety. Today is your focus. Tell somebody, concentrate on today. Concentrate on today. Don't worry 
about tomorrow. So labor today with God's guidance and great faith. The Lord's Prayer teaches us to pray for our daily bread. Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. The implication is that we can have divine supply for today's consumption as we receive strength to finish today's duties. We can have divine supply for today's consumption. Don't be looking for the supply of one month. Don't be looking for the supply of one year. Don't be looking for the supply of ten years. Be contented with the supply of today. That's why Jesus said, give us this day. While he was teaching us how to pray. When he was giving us a pattern of prayer. The focus is today. Somebody say today. Now, beloved, between yesterday, today, and tomorrow, only today is yours. You know why? Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not come. Only today is what is yours. Did you hear me now? It is only God that owns yesterday, that owns today, that owns tomorrow. For every human being, only today is ours. Even in today, only now is ours. The next five minutes, we are not sure of it. Are you hearing me now? We can only be sure of now. So, be contented with today. Worry and anxiety will build up. When we want to have one year at a go, when we want to have one month at a go, when we want to have the supply of 10 years at a go, just be satisfied with today. Somebody say today. Say it again today. The truth is this. Your business is really with today. Your business is really with today. Let me share two scriptures with you. Ecclesiastic chapter 9. I read verse 10. Ecclesiastic chapter 9. I read verse 10. The Bible says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. Did you hear that? Whatever your hand findeth to do, the implication is today. Somebody say today. Somebody say today. Live your life purposefully. Whatever your hand finds to do now, do it with all your might. Because when today is gone, you won't find it again. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy mind. For there is no work. There is no device. There is no knowledge. There is no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. So your business is really with today. Tell somebody, your business is with today. Say it again, your business is with today. Very, very important is a lesson you must learn. Because if you don't learn that lesson, the devil will complicate your life with the thoughts of tomorrow, with the thoughts of five years to come, with the thoughts of ten years to come, with the thoughts of twenty years to come. And you will be frustrated today. Be satisfied with today. Whatever your hand find it to do, today, do it well. Spend today as if there will be no tomorrow to spend. Be thorough today. Be committed today. Okay? Sacrifice today. Work today. Pray today. Read the Bible today. Fellowship today. Do everything today as if there will be no more time to do it again. That is how to make good use. Believe God for your supply today. 
and take full advantage of the provision of God today. Stop worrying about 10 years to come. Stop worrying about 2 years to come. Stop worrying about 3 months to come. Today is really your business. It is an error of monumental proportion to import the possible burden of tomorrow into the duties of today. That's a mistake. That's the wrongest way to live. Importing the burden of tomorrow into the duties of today. You know, when you do that, the devil will mess up your today. And then the assurance of tomorrow will not be there. Leave the burden of tomorrow till tomorrow. Face the duties of today. Because if you import the burden of tomorrow into the duties of today, that will decrease your strength. That will deplete your strength. That will destroy your strength. The strength that is meant for today's responsibilities will be taken out. And you won't find the result today. That will amount to overloading today with the trials that have not really arrived. The trials, the problems that have not really started. That will mean you are overloading this day with the problem that may not even show up. That will mean that you are overloading today with the situations that may not even come up. Reserve the strength of today for today. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Anxiety about things which have not yet arrived is a double tragedy. It is an unnecessary venom that will poison and destroy today with tomorrow's troubles. Beloved, can I tell you something? When tomorrow comes with his burdens, the God of tomorrow will bring sufficient grace and strength to, to go through. How many of you agree with me? That when tomorrow eventually come, with all his burdens, with all his challenges, there is a God of tomorrow. That God is my God. That God is your God. He will give you sufficient grace and strength for tomorrow. Worry about the future is useless because it will cripple you in the present. And it will destroy your efficiency today. Brethren, every day has its own problems and challenges. If you want to go through life without being caged under unbearable load of problems, treat each day as a unit. Treat each day as a unit. Treat each day as a unit. What did I say? Treat each day as a unit. Otherwise, you will be weighed down with unbearable load of problem. Do not carry yesterday or tomorrow with you today. Leave yesterday to yesterday. Leave tomorrow till tomorrow. Face today. Enjoy today. Are you hearing me now? Leave for today. In the strength of the Lord. Tell somebody, I will live for today in the strength of the Lord. Say it again, I will live for today in the strength of the Lord. Say it again, I will live for today in the strength of the Lord. Now, open your Bible to Psalm 118. Psalm 118. I will read verse 24. I want every one of us to read it. Psalm 118 verse 24. Are you there? Psalm 118 verse what? Verse 24. Are you there now? Okay, can we read it together? One, two, go. This is the day which the Lord had made. What will happen? We will rejoice and be glad in it. Did you hear that? This is the day which the
the law had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Live for today in the strength of the Lord. Look at what Jesus said in John chapter 9. John chapter 9. I will read verses 4 and 5. John chapter 9 verses 4 and 5. Jesus said, I must walk the walks of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I must what? Walk the works of him that sent me. What is Jesus doing? He's focusing on when? Today. He's treating every day as a unit. Focusing it as they come. Not, not saddling today with yes, yesterday's problem. Not saddling today with tomorrow's body. Focusing on today. That's how to overcome worry and anxiety. Let me take the last point. You remember the first point? What's the first point? Live tomorrow with God and his good foresight. Because he's the one that knows what is going to come tomorrow. What is the second point? Labor for today with God's guidance and what? And great faith. Now, this is the third point. Let today be a gateway to a glorious future. Let today be a what? A gateway to a glorious future. If you look at the first point, we focus on tomorrow. Leave it. Don't worry about it. The second point, we focus on when? Today. Just focus on today. Don't bother about yesterday. Don't bother about tomorrow. Focus on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, this third point is saying that is a way to use today to create a greater tomorrow. That is the third point. How many of you want to know that way? That is a way to use today. Create a what? A greater tomorrow. Instead of worrying about tomorrow. Hey, what will happen? What will not happen? What will happen? What will not happen? Why not find out how to use today to make tomorrow better? I think that is wisdom. Are you hearing me now? And that is one of the best ways to overcome worry and anxiety. Let today be a gateway to a glorious future. Now, the first thing I want you to know is this. Every day has the following. Every day has the following. Are you ready? Are you ready? I want to list to you what every day has. Number one, every day has problems and promises. Problems and promises. Every day has it. Both positive and negative. Every day has it. That's why Jesus says sufficient of each day is the evil thereof. It's not only evil that is in a day. Good are also in it. So, there are positive and negative. Every day has problems and what? And promises. Problem is the negative part. Promises are the positive part. Number two, obstacles and miracles. Every day has obstacles and miracles. That's the reality. Every day has its own miracles. Every day has its own obstacles. The next one, barriers and opportunities. Every day has barriers and opportunities. Every day has it. The barriers are the negative experience. The opportunities are the positive experience. The next one, every day has its own burdens and benefits. Burdens and benefits. Every day has its own body. Every day has its own benefit. The burdens are the negative. The benefits are the positive. Every day has its own disappointment and duties. Disappointment and duties. 
Yes, every day has it. Every day has its own setbacks and stepping stones. Every day has its own setbacks and stepping stones. Setbacks and stepping stones. Every day has it. Every day has its own lessons and challenges. That's how many, that's how many now. That's how many now. Seven. Those seven things. Every day has its own share of those seven, those seven things. Okay? Problems and promises, obstacles and miracles, barriers and opportunities, burdens and benefits, disappointment and duties, setbacks and stepping stones, lessons and challenges. Every day has that. Monday has it. Tuesday has it. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday has it. Are you hearing me now? Different people with different reports of the same day. Some people come to report the problems. Some people come to report the promises. Some people come to report the miracles. Some people come to report the obstacles. The reality is that the evil of the day, as well as the good of the day, is sufficient for it. Every day has those things I have shared with you. But how can we now use every day as a gateway to a glorious future? This is how. How many of you want to know how? Number one, develop the discipline of taking advantage of everything that the day has to develop moral and spiritual muscle for a greater tomorrow. I will explain it. You don't have to write it the same way I read it. Okay? You may form your note from my explanation. You know, there are problems, there are promises. You remember those things I've listed for you. Now, what you now do is this. If it is problems you find in a day, develop the discipline to take advantage of that problem to develop moral and spiritual muscle for a better tomorrow. If it is the promises you find in that day, develop the discipline to take advantage of that promise to develop moral and spiritual muscle for a better tomorrow. We must not waste our day we must not waste today's experience. That the experience is negative does not mean it doesn't have future prospects. Hello, somebody. If you are a business person, you made a shortage today. Are you with me now? Let's say something happened that is a shortage today. Must you waste that experience? Talk to me. Must you waste that experience? Do you know the shortage of today can get you ready to get better profit tomorrow? Must you say because that shortage is not a good experience, so it doesn't have its own benefit? No. Let that shortage instruct you on how to get better tomorrow. You don't have to repeat the same mistake twice. If you repeat a mistake twice, you are not making better use of your day. Don't waste your failures. Don't waste your success. Don't waste your experience. There is no event that is not to teach us something. Every event, you must learn something and use it to develop the moral and the spiritual muscle for a greater tomorrow. Did you hear me now? Yo bani eni ojiya won ni ologbon tani t-shirt o ko e. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Ja o pe ninu iya jije eyan ma nko ogbon nbe. Hello somebody. That an experience is negative doesn't mean that it doesn't have something to teach you. Every day has its own obstacles and miracles. Let's say you 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 experience the obstacle Yes, that's a negative experience. But use that obstacle that you experience today to develop moral and spiritual muscle for a better tomorrow. 
Did you hear me now? Let that obstacle teach you how not to encounter obstacles again tomorrow. And if you experience the miracle, don't be too happy that you lose the lesson. Oh, we have the miracle. Praise God. Even in that miracle, use it as a tool to develop moral and spiritual muscle for a better tomorrow. Learn today. Oh. What did I say? Your learning today will secure tomorrow. We make tomorrow better. Somebody betray you today. Don't be bitter. It's an experience. He's only teaching you how not to be betrayed tomorrow. Because a higher level of betrayal may be coming tomorrow. And if you don't learn any lesson from today's lower level of betrayal, you will be a victim of a greater betrayal tomorrow. Don't let us waste our experience. Either positive or negative. There is something that they must teach us. Take advantage of everything. Did you hear me now? The problems, the promises, the setback, the stepping stones, the miracles, the obstacles, the barriers, the opportunities, the disappointment, the duties, the burdens, and the benefits. All of them, take advantage of them to develop a moral and spiritual muscle for a greater tomorrow. How many of you got that point? That's the first way. You know, that's the first way. You know, let me give you an experience. You know, when I was writing my school search years ago, are you hearing me now? You know, one of my, anybody who knows me know that one of my best subjects is biology. Are you hearing me now? Even as at that time, I used to teach my colleagues biology. You know, we have a group that we know our area of specialty. It's not as if we are not good in all the subjects. But we know who is better than all of us in a particular subject. For example, when it is English language, it is me. When it is biology, it is me. When it is mathematics, I have a friend who is a medical doctor today. They give him maths, they give him physics, they give him, that time we call it additional mathematics. Those are the three subjects they give it to him. And then I have another friend today who is a pharmacist today. When it is chemistry, they give it to him, a Greek and things like that. That's how we distribute those subjects. So when we are studying together, if it is English, I will come out and I will be teaching my colleagues as if I am the, I'm their teacher. And they will have to respond and respect me for that time. I will even give them assignment. When it is time for math, my friend who is a medical doctor today will come out and teach all of us. We ask her, he will give us assignment. That is the kind of group I belong to when I was in the secondary school. That's the kind of friendship we go, we, I was involved in. Not, uh, not yeah, 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 stupid friendship. We, we select ourselves. Are you hearing me now? So, if it is English language, if it is biology, if it is economics, it is my subject. I teach it. So, everybody knows. So, the day we are going to write why, write our school SAT exam, the theory, we've done the practicals, but the theory, we know, I wrote everything, did the objective, did the, in fact, I know all the questions in the theory session. I know all the questions. The issue is which one will I do? Since it's not every question that we are to do. Are you hearing me now? Okay, so I picked and I was doing it. You know, with that knowledge and excitement, listen to me. I forgot to write my name and my number at the back of my script. Did you hear me? Oh, you didn't answer me. I forgot. I did my work very well. I was so confident. Ah, a mini biology master. Are you here? I was so confident. I did it. I came out. I had already got into my house. 
before I remember that I didn't write my name and I didn't write my number. So my script has no identity. Even if I score 100 over 100, it is still going to come out to be zero. Because my script doesn't have identity. It's a faceless script. Are you hearing me now? It was very painful. Oh, very painful. And there is nothing I can do again. When the result came out, my biology became P7. So which means it was only the practicals that was, that was used that gave me P7. Can you imagine if I had gotten, if my script had a name? Are you hearing me now? I would have made it. So I had P7. It was so painful. Even the, the, my mates that I was teaching biology, some of them having A1, A2, A3, and they said, wow, what happened to you? I told them my problem. Oh, everybody was so sorrowful and all that. Okay, I got ready for the, that time they used to have GCE. Are you hearing me now? The outside GCE. So I got ready for the GCE. I sat for the GCE. And I didn't really read for that GCE. But I still got three in my biology. Are you hearing me now? That was a failure, isn't it? That was a mistake, isn't it? That I was writing and I wrote everything well, but I forgot to write my name and the number at the back. From that time, it became my first thing I do. In any exam in my life, I will never make that mistake again. You didn't hear what I said. I will never make that mistake again. Even I tell my children, the first thing you do, any one of you who are a student that I've ever counseled before, you will remember. The first, when they give you your script, the first thing you do, your number, your name, put everything right. Because... I learned from that time to prepare for tomorrow. Many of us are not using today to prepare for tomorrow. Because you fail today, the devil tells you the end has come. It's a lie. Let that be a great lesson. To learn how not to fail again. Don't stay on your failure and continue to regret for life. Opportunities will come that you will use the wisdom from that failure to escape another failure. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't, 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 don't continue to bemoan your failure. Don't continue to regret. Hey, had I known, had I known, had I known, had I known. Are you hearing me now? I spoke to a woman years ago. She kept regretting about the husband she married. She kept regretting about the husband she married. I said, but you can't undo this now. You're already married to this man. Why don't you choose to live in peace and joy and take all the lessons of how to get a better man and take advantage of it to educate your daughters? Are you hearing me now? So that they won't repeat the next, the same mistake. Sit down and tell your daughters, this is how you know jokers. This is how you know Casanovas. This is how you know fake men. This is how you... Use your experience for our own advantage so that the future can be better. Most daughters will repeat the same mistake of their mothers. Because while the mothers continue to regret for life, they forget their responsibility of coaching the next generation. And so the problem continues. When a problem happened in the last generation and it happened in this generation, immediately they will conclude it's an ancestral problem. I pray for you. Afflictions will not arise the second time. Every man will make mistakes. Because no man is perfect. But learn. What did I say? Learn. Don't, don't, you cannot regret, cannot undo what has already been done. So don't continue to regret. Hey, I me, hey, me, me, bam, bam, bam. Don't need that. You don't need that. What did I say? You don't need that. Face the reality. Many of you that you are driving car, you know that you don't look back and be moving forward. Yes or no? If you keep looking back and you are moving forward, what will happen to you? You will crash. That's how many of us live our life. You are looking backward. Hey, you know my mistake. Hey, 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 hey. I use all my mistake in the past as a training session for my children. Not only for my children, for all the children that God has brought to me. I tell them, this don't do this. This don't do this. This don't do this. This don't do this. Because I know what it means. Are you hearing me now? That time is gone. 
I can, I'm continue to look, I'm, I will continue to look at the future. I cannot be looking at the back and be going to the future. That will be accident. That will be crash. Don't crash again. The mistake has been committed. Did you hear me? Learn from it. And get ready for a greater tomorrow. A new day is coming for you. I can't hear your amen, please. I say a new day is coming for you. A better day is coming. 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 A better day is coming for you. That is if you take advantage of what you have today to develop moral and spiritual muscle for a greater tomorrow. Let me show you this scripture. Second Corinthians. I want everybody to open chapter 4. I'm really going to focus on verse 17. But let me start from verse 16. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Let me start to read from verse 16. Are you there? Are you there now? For which cause we what? We faint not. Is there anybody today who would decide I won't faint again? I won't be discouraged again. I won't be, I won't regret again. Is there anybody who will say that today? It doesn't matter what has happened. The only thing I will do is to learn. I won't regret. Because my regret cannot undo what has already been done. You know, the Bible says, for this, for which cause, we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the what? The inward man is what? Is renewed day by day. That can only happen when you are using the failure of today to learn. The implication of this is that if you learn today from your experience today, either positive or negative, you will be better tomorrow. That's the meaning. Now look at verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a what? A moment. What worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Look up everybody. There is a way that your affliction today can position you for glory tomorrow. Did you hear me? That possibility is in that verse. Our affliction of today can work for us a far greater weight of glory for tomorrow. That is if we learn from it. May you not waste your day again. Not whatever may be your experience today. Take advantage of it. Use that experience to build moral and spiritual muscle. You fail a course. When you get the result and you fail, sit down. Review why you fail. Did you hear what I say? Review it. Review. Don't continue to cry and cry and cry and cry. If you have to cry, cry for a time and, and wipe your face and sit down. And then look through it. Why did I fail? What happened? What happened? Be sincere to yourself. Learn. Use the lesson to build a protection for tomorrow. So that you will not fail again tomorrow. But if you don't do that, if all you do is just cry, 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 cry. Ah! Your failure has just started you. Because you keep failing and failing. And because you didn't take advantage of it. Don't let us be overjoyed when we have miracle. Let's learn from it. Let's take advantage of the burden. Let's take advantage of the opportunities. Let's take advantage of the Let's take advantage of the barriers. Let's take advantage of the opportunities. Let's take advantage of the obstacles and the miracles, the problems and the promises, the setbacks and the stepping stones, the disappointment and the duty. Number two, how do you make today become a gateway to a glorious future? Learn to welcome each day as a new gift from God. Learn to welcome each day day as a new gift from God. A gift of God. Today is Sunday, 29th of September. See today as a new gift from God. Welcome today as a new gift from God. A gift that you are going to use to build your yesterday's dream and your tomorrow's vision. A gift that you are going to use to build 
your yesterday's dream and tomorrow's vision. For yesterday, it is dream. For tomorrow, it is vision. Today is the gift that you will use to build yesterday's dream and build tomorrow's vision. Is that okay? Did you hear what I say? Use it. Now, that I failed yesterday doesn't mean I'm going to fail again today. The problem most of us have is this. Let's say you failed Saturday, September 28th. That was yesterday. And when you woke up this morning, the devil remind you, you know you failed yesterday. You know you are going to fail again today. Tell him it's a lie. Did you hear me now? How many of you are following me? Tell the devil it's a what? It's a lie. Today is special. Today is a new day. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Today is a new gift. Tell God today is a new gift. Say it again. Today is a new gift. Every day is a new gift. A new gift from God. Today's gift. The gift of today. I will use it to build my yesterday dream. And to build my tomorrow's vision. I will do something today. That will contribute to the dream of yesterday. And the vision of tomorrow. At the end of your life every day. Ask yourself, what did I do today that is contributing to my dream of yesterday and my vision of tomorrow? If there is nothing you wasted that day, did you hear what I say? If there is nothing you have done that is contributing directly or indirectly to the dream of yesterday and to the vision of tomorrow, you wasted that day. Stop wasting your day. Stop wasting your day. Did you hear me now? Stop wasting your day. Stop wasting your day. Every day is a new gift. There is no connection between yesterday and today. See it as a fresh gift from God. Now, open your Bible to Lamentation. I love this scripture because Lamentation is a book of sorrow. Because it is cry, 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 cry. But in the midst of that cry, See this light coming out. Lamentation chapter 3. I will read verses 22 and 23. Lamentation chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Are we still together? Okay, I will read it. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Do you know some people slept yesterday, they couldn't wake up this morning. So it is of the Lord's mercy. That we are not consumed. Because his compassion fail not. What happens to it? Verse 23. Everybody, I want you to say after me. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithful name. Now if the masses of God, the compassion of God is new every morning. Then it means every morning is a fresh gift of God to you. Did you hear me? Every day is a fresh gift of God to me. Take every day like that. It is a fresh gift of God. A new day, a new gift of God to me. To use, to build my yesterday dream and to build my tomorrow's vision. That's how you make today become a gateway to your future. Number three. Take today as your most precious possession. Take today as your most precious possession. Take today as your most precious possession. That's how you use today as a gateway to a glorious future. Every day is your most precious possession. Yesterday is gone and gone forever. Yesterday ended last night. You can never touch it again. Tomorrow is not yet here. So the only possession you have now is what? Today. Somebody say today. Somebody say today. Today is your most precious possession. Take it like that. How do you use your precious possession? I'm asking you. Do you waste it? Do you do Father Christmas with it? Do you use it carelessly? Do you handle it carelessly? Any precious possession. Now, assuming, let me ask you. Assuming you buy a car 
worth 1.5 billion naira. A Rolls Royce Kulina gift. I mean, new one. Chacha. And you bought it. 1.5 billion naira. You will allow the children on your street to use stone to write something on it. Talk to me! This is a car that even the tire can buy new, new vehicle on, the, on its own. You allow anybody to just use it. What are you going to do with it? You, you take care of it. You will you handle it gently. Today is your most precious possession. Don't waste it. What did I say? Don't waste it. Use it carefully. Use it skillfully. Use it productively. Use it to affect tomorrow. You must be doing something today that will be contributing to your, your visions of tomorrow. Very, very important. Are you hearing me? You must be doing something today. If you are not doing something today that is contributing to your vision tomorrow, you are wasting it all. You are wasting your life. And that's not a good way to live. And you will never overcome worry and anxiety. Now look at Joshua. The book of Joshua. Chapter 3. I will read verse 5. Joshua chapter 3. I want all of you open and see what I'm looking at. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Hello? I will read it again. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. Why? For tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. Now, this is how I read my own. Hello? And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves today for tomorrow. How many of you know, today is not put there. But by implication, the sanctification of themselves is when? Is today. Because what the Lord is going to do is what? Is tomorrow. Did you hear what I say now? That establish a principle for you. Look up, look up, look at me everybody. Look at me everybody. That establish a principle for you. That today is the prophecy of your tomorrow. That's the principle there. And listen to me. One of the wisdom that God taught me there over the years is use today to prepare for tomorrow. Use today to prepare for tomorrow. And it affected everything in my mind. You know, when I'm studying my Bible, I study my Bible like I'm going to preach for the next 50 years. Today, I'll be, I'll be writing, I'll be reading, I'll be writing notes, I'll be reading, I'll be writing notes, I'll be reading. And those studies have become a treasure of resources to feed you today. They have become a treasure of resources that have become books today. They have become a treasure of resources that is blessing people in conferences. And did you hear what I'm saying now? One of the things my, my father, my spiritual father used to tell us is live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Say it, live ready. Say it again, live ready. If you are not living ready, you are living a poor life. You must be living ready. Living ready. Getting ready. Getting ready. Getting ready. Look at me, everybody. What, all of you that you have stayed under administration for about one, two, three years, you don't need and you don't need a power information if they say you are taking Bible study tomorrow. Hello, somebody. Ah, yes, sir. Eh? Oh, liar. Eh? Tomorrow? Eh, yes, you are taking Bible study. Say, yeah, hey, so me tell you something. That's a poor, that's a poor member. You should live ready. Study. That's why you have to come to church. You have to take your notes. You have to study the Bible, read the Bible as if you are the one preaching tomorrow. Did you hear what I say now? Now, school has, re has reopened now. Huh? School has reopened now. How many of you know that a wise parent has been planning for the school fees of the children since they went on vacation? How many of you agree with me? How many of you agree with me? Every parent understands what I'm talking about. He just told me, I'm going to go to my wallet. I'm going to go to my wallet. 
at the end of the team, finu daro, school fees, school fees, school fees. He said, Quick, but to call a friend, hey, so I don't want to know that is not correct. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, well, no, you, oh, you should mess up. Oh, I call all my people, oh, they are my tea, that can you have my tea, that is a tragedy of a father. Are you, are you hearing me now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. One of the lessons I've learned that helped me is that in preparing, in living, and as much as I can do, I put, I, uh, when it comes to finance, I put some money in. That is what we call emergency. There are things that will be emergency. You don't eat all your money. You get 10,000 today. You blow the 10,000 today. That's a foolish way of living your life. You get 1 million today. You eat the whole 1 million today. That's a foolish way of living your life. You must have financial principle. What did I say? Financial principle. If you want me to give you, see me after service. You will pay for it. <laughs> Praise God. Have your financial principle. 10% to God. 10% for savings. 10% for investment. Or all the money I have, I won't spend more than 60%. I won't spend more than 60%. 10% for tight. 10% for savings. 10% for investment. 10% for emergency. I just do that. And then you do that over the year. It's not every day that emergency will be coming now. Abi? Uh, hello, Abi? Assuming somebody just wants to sell a land. And you want to throw it up. Maybe you need that money. You just want that. You get what I'm saying now? You go get into your investment. You get something. Daddy, we Nigeria. No. do December. It's because you have eaten everything before. Only but everything is not sufficient. Even the, in the middle of that insufficiency, put something there. Are you hearing me now? There are times of emergency you have something to come up with. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? That's how to be a mystery. People will be looking at you. They think that, ah, but why? Everything, it's, it's, you plan. You get ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. And if at all. The devil is planning to bring what is greater than you to you. You have a God that will rise. Are you hearing me now? You have a God that will what? That will rise for you. When I was in this school, I start to prepare for exam from the first day of the term. The first day of the semester. I start to prepare for my exams. From the first day. From the first day. I did that much more when I was in the university because as at that time, I was mature enough to do some serious planning. All through my secondary school, I was doing some trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, and things like that. But at the university level, I was mature enough. Are you hearing me now? To know what I'm looking for and get it and then plan it. So from the first day of the semester, I'm preparing for the exams. I read like exam is going to be tomorrow. I study like exam is going to be tomorrow. So if they now say to I me, mean, next week is our exam. And everybody says, hey, next week. And they say, okay, because of this emergency, we bring it forward by three days or four days. I am ready. Did you hear what I say now? Live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Tell somebody, live ready. Live your life ready. 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 Do something today that is going to make tomorrow a better tomorrow. Is that okay? Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves. When is that sanctification going to take place? Today. For when? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders. How many of you know that tomorrow the Lord will do wonders in your life? So what do you do today? Sanctify yourself. Get ready today. That's the meaning. Get ready today. Qualify for the miracle of tomorrow 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 today. You know, there is this common statement that when the opportunity comes, it is too late to prepare. How many of you have had that 
statement before. When the opportunity comes, it is too late. Because many people say, opportunity in me or need. Opportunity, 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 opportunity. Now the opportunity has come. You now say, okay, let me go and prepare. It's too late. Did you hear me now? While you are waiting for the opportunity, be getting ready for it. Because when it comes, seize it. What did I say? 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 Seize it. If they call on me today and they say, by next week you are addressing the United Nations, I'm ready. Just give me the topic. You didn't hear what I say. I'm ready. I say, ah, but it is too close. Next week. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just need 24 hours. Just give me the topic. Uh, I, agricultural problem in Africa. You are going to that. Just give me the topic. Just give me the topic and let me have just 24 hours. I'll get it delivered. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I was going to preach for my father in the Lord in Oyo on Friday and Saturday. And he called me that Wednesday. He called me on Wednesday. And there is only tomorrow in between it. And then I was going to preach for him. If you know my spiritual father, you know what it means to stand in for a man of that spiritual stature. Are you hearing me now? And he had given them a word that I cannot come there because I am busy and give you somebody who is standing for me and God will use him to do a good job. And those people said, well, if you said so. And then the meeting is Friday and Saturday. And that Saturday is minister's conference. And part of the people that I'm going to minister to, they finished from St. Andrew College in 1973. <laughs> you did it here. You did it here. <laughs> so when he was talking to me, man of God, I am blessed with your ministration today. Ha! Ah, in fact, and he said, ah, when I come to Akure, I will come and see you. In fact, it was when I finished from St. Andrew College in 1973 that I went to Akure last. I didn't talk again. <laughs> Praise God. Because that 1973 that he was talking about, I don't think I've even recognized myself. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I said, okay, 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 okay. But when he goes, blessed him. Okay? But I was told on Wednesday, that you are going to Oyo on Friday and Saturday. And they said, okay, another person will contact you and give you the team of the program and the topic and everything. And that's all. So before the end of the day, they gave me the team and the topic of the program that I'm going on Friday morning. And I have only, you know, and I still came to do Bible study for you that Wednesday evening. Oh, you didn't hear me. And you won't see it in my face. And I have only Thursday to get prepared. And Jesus did wonders there. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Live ready. Live. When I told my wife, this is what daddy said. He said, that's one of your tests. I, I'm very sure he's testing you. And I knew he was testing me. Maybe this one will say, ah, yes, ah, it's too close. Give me more time. Mm. Live ready. Did you hear what I say now? Live ready. Somebody was shaking it. Come on, let's have me a chair. Ready, me chair. One be fellow me. The next one, Toba, you want one? Be fellow. Toba, what? What you want? Impression? Oh, ready? One Toba. Mama, dad, any of our ready? Chair. Mama, dad. Oh, just no be too serious. Yes or no? But when they say, you say yes, I'm ready. And then they give you. Then the next one, they will give. Ah, that guy is always ready. He will deliver. He will do this. He will do that. Leave what? Ready. Are you tired? Hello. And this is the last one. Learn to go through each day with these three things. That's number what now? That should be number four. This is how to make today be a gateway to a glorious future. Number four. Learn to go through each day with these three things I'm going to mention. Number one, with the work of faith. Go through each day with the work of faith. Somebody says, work of faith. Number two, with the labor 
of love. With the labor of love. Not eye service. Labor of love. The labor of love. And number three. With the patience of hope. With the patience of hope. Right in front of it, First Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. Let me explain. Go through each day with these three things. What's number one? Talk to me. The work of faith. What's number two? The labor of love. What's number three? The patience of hope. Let me explain to you what is work of faith. Go through each day with these three things. That is what will help you to position yourself for a greater tomorrow. The work of faith. Look at me, everybody. You are believing God for something. The work of faith is the step you are taking for the realization of what you are believing God for. The step. Somebody say corresponding action. Say corresponding action. I'm believing God for a first class. That's your faith. You are believing God for it. But the work of faith is the things you are taking every day towards the realization of that faith. How, what is your daily reading and study arrangement? That is the work of faith. Faith without works is what? Is dead. Faith without work is what? Is dead. Look at me. I'm believing God for my healing. I'm believing God for my healing. Maybe you have a condition in your body. You are believing God for your healing and things like that. The work of faith is, what are you doing every day as a corresponding action to that your faith? Okay, every day, I will confess 20 healing scriptures. Every day, I will confess 20 healing scriptures. I will speak to my body. I will speak to my... You get what I'm saying now? That is the work of what? Of faith. For everything you are believing God for, look for the corresponding action and start to take that step. I'm believing God that I'm going to have a private school tomorrow. What is the corresponding action? Are there books you should read about private school management? Are there courses you should take? Don't just stay with I'm believing God. I'm believing God. And every day is going. Every day is going. Nothing is done. Nothing is done. There must be that corresponding action. Our faith comes alive because of the corresponding work. Did you hear me now? Everything you are believing God for has a corresponding work. Go through each day with the what? The work of faith. The work of faith. The work of faith. That's the corresponding action. That's the corresponding action. Are you hearing me now? The second thing is the labor of love. Somebody say labor of love. I mean practical labor. Practical labor. Get down to work. What did I say? Get down to work. Get down to work. Get down to work. Get down to work. Not eye service. Get down to work. Now, I told you yesterday while I was ministering to you, at the leading light, I said, if you get to the bush today, and the first day, you harvested yam, you are a thief. Hello? The first day, you go into the bush, you say you are a farmer, and the first day, you didn't clear the ground, though. you didn't make heaps, so, you have not done. You have vested yams. You stole it. You are a thief. Anyone who will have vested yam must put labor down. Oh, did you hear me now? We have a generation that believe in freebies. Freebies. They don't want to work, but they want to spend money. That's why we are where we are now. Looking for a generation that is not ready to put labor ground. Somebody, you heard that, that Baba Wedeko is celebrating 70th birthday. And they gave him uh, Rose Royal and things like that. And so one stupid person who just started ministry yesterday wanted to be like, <laughs> and she also told him, Papa, Papa, who are you? 
Where are you coming from? Wani bolo ti jawa to lo kun lo wo papa iwo won a o fe ku niyan ni kake a o mo tu mo papa o se nyc nyc president won pe en papa won ma gbe esin lai pe your journey has not started what do you mean by papa are you hearing what i'm saying now oh ma won ma pe en papa ni those who are put labor ground put labor are you hearing what i'm saying now those who are put labor on the ground those who are their sweat has gone to the ground. Labor of love. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. If you are a lazy person, you waste your day. I'm your pastor. I will tell you the truth. There are no manna flowing from heaven for lazy people. Get down to work. Get down to work. What did I say? Get down to work. 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 I came here yesterday, a minister. As soon as I finish, he says, I have to rush back home. I have a Bible school that I'm going to teach again for another one hour. Teaching and preaching and preaching and preaching. Are you hearing me now? I am busy till December 31. Get down to work. Anyone who, who will not work must not work, must not eat. Somebody say labor of love. Do you know the love aspect? If it is labor of love, it's something that they didn't force you to do. And it will be developing you. The labor that you do are you hearing what I'm saying now? When you are old enough to buy your own car, you won't know how to clean it. Are you hearing me now? Yeah, me see, ma. Come and assist me in the kitchen. <laughs> you will be a disaster of a wife in the future. Are you hearing me now? When they give you work, they are helping your tomorrow. When they give you assignment, they are helping your tomorrow. Do this. Do, it is in doing it that you know it. It is in doing it that you know it. It is in doing it that you know it. Did you hear what I'm saying now? It is in doing it that you know it. Don't say, I'm the only person they used to 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 say, Did you hear what I'm saying now? I'm the only person they used to say, 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 Did you hear me now? Ibe lati ra won mo obirin mi tan gbo mi kana to mi ha tu jo. Ngba ti o se n to ko. Ti o mo se. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When 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 we were younger, I followed my dad to the fact cuz he don't say no ko ti mi mo se. It's only I don't have time for it again. Are you hearing me now? What e be ni kan na fi cover? Because my father used to have back issue. So that's the only thing he will contract out. Every other farm work we do it. Are you hearing me now? Momokoro, Mombokonsi. There is nothing about farm that I don't know how to do. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are, that is labor of love. Oh, You are a vice principal today. Your principal is giving you assignment. Give me assignment. He is getting ready for a great future. If you don't do it well, oh, by the time you become principal, you will be a tragedy of a principal. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Wait for your time and get ready for your time. Wait for your okay, and he said, Oh, and he said, Oh, and he said, You know, the the how do I put it to hey, somebody say more assignment, somebody say more assignment. But that is that is a word that my spiritual father used to use regularly, I'm trying to remember that word that the burden of, of the faithful is more assignment. Somebody said, The burden of the faithful is more assignment. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When you see somebody giving you assignment, you better be in fact, you should be thanking that person every day. And to feka moshe, on loan so feka lo mashe. Shebo, and to feka shekini, kamoshe, on loan so feka lo mashe. When they give you, don't complain. Do it. Labor. 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 Labor of love. Most of the time, the labor of today is the prophecy of where you are going tomorrow. Your pastor's wife is always calling you, giving you assignment, giving you assignment. Maybe you are going to be a, a wife of a major pastor tomorrow. 
So that you begin to learn from now. Learn from now. By the time you get there, you are not going to be a disappointment. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Labor of love. Every day, walk of faith and then what? Labor of love. Labor of love. Put labor on the ground. Labor. Don't be lazy. And then, finally, I hope I've not wasted your time today. Finally, patience of what? Of who? Tell somebody, my time will come. Say, say it again, my time will come. The devil will give you an impression that irony, there is no future for you. Your time is not coming. It's a lie. My time will come. Patience of hope. Say after me, walk of faith. You must be taking a corresponding action to give legitimacy to your faith. Labor of love. That labor is the development that you need for tomorrow. In Toban, Shele, Nino, Luma, Moshe, Lola. In Toban, everyone wants champion in every field. A ni kono bere o. Ben abibeko. A ni kono. One year, you only woolori. Yo, o nino boli wu. Anything, o wu, wu, ti bauri. She, nino bi. Eda milo. O nino boli wu. Somebody with his grey head. She, nino bi. No. So, if you are going to be a master somewhere, you are going to be a champion somewhere. You are going to stand before kings tomorrow. Labor of love. Love aspect is don't grumble. Don't say you are the only person they are punishing. Don't say you are the only one they are sending. And therefore, you will leave the place so that they can know your value. You have no value. If you leave, you have no value. That's the end of your value. Let them be sending. I'm praying that we see somebody that will be sending me work. Sending me work. I told people. There are many, there is no assignment that my spiritual father gave me to do that has never developed me. Every assignment he gave me has developed, I've spoken to, I've spoken to many people, even in their headquarter church, when I'm given assignment to take their workers and stewards and all that, I told them that, I said, every assignment that he gave me is my opportunity for development. And I mean it, not I service statement. That's the truth of the matter. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. Very, very important. Every assignment that is given to me is an opportunity to develop. Every assignment that is given to me. Yes, you are going to do it. That's your future. You are compromising. Rise up on your feet. How many of you are blessed today? Say after me, walk of faith. You know, uh, um, Ayo, Ayo, come. No, look at this young man. What, what are you studying in the university? Huh? Applied geophysics. His father is a mechanic. A very good one. At, okay? One day I told him, I said, you better be following your dad. You do hear what I say now. Did I not tell you? He is repairing generator. The father is very creative. Very creative. It's with piano generator. You will handle car and do things. You better follow him. Master Queen, we're in university. You better follow him and learn. Stay with him. When he said, bring me spanner, give him spanner. Watch how he's doing it. How he's doing it. Now he's reading applied geophysics. Is it a crime if he knows how to repair car? Even with his degree. Is it a crime if he knows how to repair generator? May, may our generation be wiser. We have a, we have a very foolish, empty headed Gen Z generation. That are, that are not ready for tomorrow. And they say, uh, the, the, uh, the, the youth of today are the, are, the, are the future leader. Which youth of today is the future leader? There are many youth of today that will be, that will be future, future area boy. I'm telling you, that will be future, future thugs. Future all right, Sababa. I'm telling you. But it is the youth of today that is taking serious advantage, putting labor, labor down. That's going, to be, that's going to be somewhere tomorrow. I told my wife this morning, when my father was alive, when we were very young, okay, he used to tell me, Kayo de shuwa mo fo wen lak bala yu shek bukbo. Uwe re kuwa mo ane, tera mo, ke bimo ba pa o lo jo la. How many of you have heard me said it before? Because if he takes me to the farm today, let's say today is Monday, I will walk. He has to rest me on Tuesday. Otherwise, I will crash with malaria for the next one week. So I will rest on Tuesday. On Wednesday, he will take me again. But my senior brother, 
If he likes, go to farm from January 1 to December 31, he will be stronger. And he's a technical person. But me, I can sit down for 16 hours, reading without standing up, and I will not sleep, and I will be studying, and I will still be there. So my father studied the two of us. He, knew, he said, Tired this one for well, like I said, it's a bore. A bore literally. Coco Kinu. So for well, like I said, too. We're a common, a coach, a key. My father has gone to be with the Lord today. Assuming me, Telia Moroyne, he be a family in the room. Most of the people correcting you today, they are doing it for your sake. Tiel and by us all. Kin Musso. To buy any buy willingly, a year non to show. Tiel and by us all. To buy the home bed no song, oh my daddy, young but to buy ya. What's up, we want sober. But I pray that you will not regret your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your father is a baba. Oh, what is good? What stops you from going to the shop and learning how to bab? What stops you? From going to the shop and learning, you are going to be a better version of your father because he doesn't have the education you have. He is a baba. Okay? You have a good education. You also add babbing to it. What stops you from doing that? Your mother is a tailor. She didn't have education, but she's a tailor. She can sew very well. What stops you? Even after you have finished your university, go to her and learn. Learn how to sew. Let's lift our hands to Jesus today. Are you blessed? Lord, I will not waste today again. That's a simple prayer. Open your mouth and pray. I will not waste my day again. I will not waste my day again. I will not waste my day again. Open your mouth. So bear for long. Enough of wastage. Enough of frivolity. I will be using today to get ready for a greater future. It is not too late. It's not too late. I will be using today to get ready for a greater future. Ibita waikolama wamo, there is a greater future. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. Get ready for it. I will use today to get ready for a greater future. Let's talk to the Lord.